And this is another installation that's all alone in the studio um, and, and that relates to the East River. I started a project based on, on water uh, and um, it's in progress, so I don't want to talk too much about it, but uh, it just gives you a glimpse of where I am at the studio. And that's it. So, um, maybe I'll show you another. I think we're doing, we're doing well. So, so can I still have time to, to show a little bit before questions? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. So, uh, why don't you? I'll, I'll just I'll just walk. You bear with me, please. Yeah, this is a relatively new platform, so I'm sure everyone understands as the artist moves the camera in their studio. Of you might see some floor shots. I just don't want to give them a, a camera <laughs> dizziness, that's all, but it's good. So, um, so I'm getting closer to the piece that I guess you saw in, my, in the background. And that's a piece that I made um, after I did the, the, those collages for Las Vegas and the uh, LAU curved uh, piece. Um, it, but I still wanted to explore the idea of flatness and uh, still combine my texture. So it's a very subtle kind of elevation. You see it on the side. Um, you really need to get close to see that this is not, not a, a totally flat. It comes out, you have some strings going out. I mean, it's very, very layered and textured. You see some drawings. And this is a very, very, very autobiographical piece. Um, and it has um, also a combination of places that mean a lot to me. And I leave it up to you to, to bring it to your world. Okay. And I'll take you to the paintings that I make. I make some paintings too, and they're, uh, I don't know, they're just square and small, and I, I make them every day. And I love making them. And I, this is a series that's been going on for a while, but I really wanted to make a series when in the quarantine time. So these are a few of them. And then I can go further. And there are quite a lot of them. <laughs> um, Okay, so we have a lot of questions about materials um, and kind of, you know, with the, the paintings, um, are there collage elements in the paintings? There are questions about what you use as adhesives and kind of where, where some of those, those source materials, these, these items you're using, they come from. You mentioned you use drawings and paintings and what other types of found objects. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Sure. So the, the drawings and paintings are all mine and they also recycled installations are, are all pieces as I, you know, like the one in Leipzig, the, the column, I, I reuse it. And, and some materials can be cables or, you know, a, a found paper or a re re reused material, not that I produce, but rather than that I find. Uh, I started after the, the exper experience in, in Lisi, I really started using more of silk in my work. Uh, and um, the other thing that I use quite a lot is photography and the photography is mine. So 
it's a mixture of, of material that I produce and, and recycle and, and, and material that I find. And for the paintings, the paintings are acrylic. Uh, some of them have stamp collage elements, most of them are paint. Does that answer? I think so. Um, it's very interesting thinking about like those, the smallness of the paintings and these monumental scales. I mean, some of these installations you've shown in the slideshow are really enormous. And yes. you talk yeah. about how, like a little bit more broadly about how in general you moved into becoming such a, a large scale installation artist. So I, I started working uh, two dimensional. I mean, I'm coming from drawing and painting. I think I mentioned that before. Um, but I always had the need to go out into the space and, and create, and this is as if the, 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 stalls, the lines and, and, the, and the paint wanted to come out into, into the space and become a material. And I started with, I, I just started with, um, opportunities that I had for spaces to experiment with with this this urge that I had uh, and I started with the walls and then it just grew in into the space so um, I, I, I can't really pinpoint an, a, a specific point where it happened it's an evolution it's something that was always in my DNA I think and always wanted to come out and I luckily had the opportunity to, for it to come out. Um, in terms of this, the size of, of the painting and the small, I have this, I, I love working small and I love creating monumental worlds in miniature. Um, it's, it's, it's just a joy for me. I, um, I, I don't like that much medium sizes. It's either very small or very big. And uh, that said, I mean, like very big, uh, it can be like a larger painting, but or a larger wall relief, but, but not, uh, not everything is 10 feet by 10 feet or whole rooms. But um, you know what I mean? It's not, it's not the medium size um, work that, that appeals to me, that I, that I thrive in, you know, it's not my environment. I, I like very small, very big. And um, it's when you, when you work small, it's not working the same as working big. It's a very different state of mind. It's faster. Uh, it's, um, I, I, you, I create it, um, I would say more spontaneously. Uh, there's less planning involved. I mean, in large installations you have to plan a lot, there's, there's a lot involved, uh, you have to take into account the architecture of the room and the, uh, the structure and that it doesn't fall and it, it's, uh, there's, there are many technical issues there, so th th it's, it's, it's a big relief for me to work with, with the small paintings. Does that answer? I think so. We still have um, many questions about materials. Okay. Um, with the collage, like what kind of adhesive do you use to build things? Um, someone asked about hot glue, someone else is asking about encaustic or wax or... I do not use hot glue or encaustic or... Uh, what, what was that? Hot glue, no. Uh, I use acrylic. I use a mixture, a mixture of acrylic uh, medium. And it holds great. I have those works, you know, some like years and they move from one place to the other and it just holds. So, so in a way, you know, each piece becomes like a pigment, like a paint pigment for me. And I, I work with it in, with, with paint too. So um, it's a very symbiotic kind of material thing that's happening. It's not one thing or the other, but in terms of adhesive, it's acrylic. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned on the column, you used the foam core as kind yes. of a space to go around the columns. Yes. And that was acrylic as well. Or I'm also wondering on some of the larger wall pieces, once you have the composition, what kind of backing you put on them? 
Okay, so for so it depends and it varies. And I started working on foam cores, like foam cores that you have. I mean, they're, they're sturdy, but they're foam cores. And so it's easy to cut. It's easy to, uh, that's how I did the, you know, for the New York Museum. I, I was able to cut it because it was a foam core. Um, but um, so I, I adhere those pieces on the foam core. But I, I stopped using foam core recently, and not recently, but in the last, in the few years, a few years ago, uh, and I started using canvas. As a backing. Yes, like here. This is a canvas. This, this like, it's not, this piece does not belong on the canvas. It's just the canvas is for another project and that, you know, I'm working on, but it, it's going to be on the canvas. Yes. I and love working on canvas. It has the flexibility. It, I can roll it. It, it, uh, it's, it's just, it, it, it has a lot of advantages and I like the material too, so. That's something people are also very curious about the way you move these or the way you install these. And this is a two part question. Do you start creating and then kind of an exhibition opportunity comes up that it works in or do you find a space and say, oh, I have this opportunity to build an installation for that particular space. How does that? Yeah, yeah. It's a very good question. And I, I, my answer is both, both ways. I, some pieces I just, like the one, the big one, actually, the one that the, the Jerusalem prism, this one, I just, I just couldn't get it out of my mind for months. It haunted me and I had to do it. And it, it's a, it's a, it was a major construction to, to, to structure something with, with wood. Somebody helped me. I, I'm not doing that on my own. <laughs> not this day. Uh, so somebody, some, somebody helped me assemble it. Uh, and then uh, I, I, I planned it and, you know, just, Took the replica of, of this prison, and um, uh, so so I had no space. It was in my studio. There, there was an open studio at the time in Bushwick, and it just took the whole space. I was, uh, and I had no idea where it's going to go, no idea whatsoever. I just needed to do it. So I have those things. I mean, that that just just comes to me, and I have to do it. And at other times, when I have the opportunity for a space, and that, that it's a, it's a, in a way, it's great to have a space to gear for because this way you you really build your you have some parameters to work with, and I love that. So I I, I do both. Oh, this is an interesting one. Is there a dream type of space that you'd like to work in? <laughs> A dream type of space. Uh, oh, there are many dream type of space. My, my, my um, I, I fancy unusual spaces, like spaces that are, that have some historical background, that, that, uh, that have some, um, some connection to it, to some stories that I can dig. Um, Industrial spaces. I wouldn't mind a museum show. No, <laughs> I don't want to go there. But uh, my my tendency is to go for unusual spaces. If if we're talking about dreams. Hmm. It's very, I'm just catching up with some things that are coming into the comments. Um, I'm actually going to go on gallery view now, so I can see everyone. And if you'd like, if you'd like to raise a question or have a comment, you can kind of wave your hand at me and maybe I'll call your name out and we can open it up for some of these comments and questions. Should I put it on gallery view? You know, if I, I'm not. Because I see myself. <laughs> I see myself. Now, if I, if I unspotlight you, then you can see more people. Now I see you. But maybe I need to put the put the press yes. the grid thing. Well, we'll see if people unmute. We're gonna go to Nancy Cohen. Hi, Nancy. Make sure you unmute yourself. Hold on, Nancy. Got it. Unmute. Okay. Does that work? Yeah. Hi, Nancy. Okay. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say a few things. I realized I've seen lots of your work and I've never heard you talk about it. So ah. it's so nice to hear you talk about it. And I always have had that experience of your work of like being first kind of astounded by the like 
um, totality of it, like drawn in by the totality and then getting lost in all the intimacies. So that thing you're talking about is um, completely how I've experienced it. And I'd seen it before I met you. So, you know, so I definitely had that, have that experience. And then the other thing that I wanted to say is I saw that big piece at NJCU and I had no idea that it was inspired by something like small and intimate. Like how big was the, was this prism you're talking about? Like with your hands? Or... Tiny. Okay. So I just <laughs> had this, like, I just, I felt like, so that's really interesting just to like know that that something small became, because that in a way is one of the most massive things that I've seen of yours. Like some, some are, might be bigger, but they're more open. That one was, it's just so solid. It's so, very solid. It was yeah. like a structure. Yeah. I so I have this fantasy in my mind that, you know, at one point I can build like a platform and people can go in there. Well, I really, I would love yeah. to do that. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, they, I just wanted to say those things. It was great. Thank you. Yeah. I have a question. Yes, this is Carol. Hi. Um, I have Hi. a question. Like, there's this thing, there is so monumental your work, but then it's so detailed. You speak at one point, you talked about one point about having that, this diaristic process in what you do. Do you think that brings in these tiny little tiles or little occurrences that become this big gesture in the end? Is it like a daily occurrence for you to keep track of of everything and all these little pieces and moving them around and is there like a some kind of story that you have in your head that you follow through it you know what i'm saying <laughs> i don't know if I i'm know, clear. no i i know what what you say i think for me it's more like in leipzig it was like that it was the one the one was that that's the way it evolved right. it was a day by day kind of experience and the, the most diaristic work i've ever made um, like really getting the even writing, you know, like the, the photographing, like the real, the real environment. Um, a lot of my work has a very biographical or autobiographical or diaristic, but they're more like hyperlinks, you know, it's, it's associative. It's not, it's not like, okay, so I woke up, you know, this day and then I, I, then I grew up here and then I went here and then I went here. It's not, it's not linear like that. It's more like 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 we have memories, you know, that 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 you it shoots at you from one place to the other, and it links in in different ways, and more like a web kind of right. linear, you know, uh, uh, structure than than linear. Yeah, the heuristic is not like day one, day two. I know, but in in Leipzig, it did it. The process was the the heuristic. The work itself was web. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Eddie, I feel like in your, your Dumbo work, you went in a different direction using a much larger photo within that uh, piece. And I wondered if that is a direction that you might follow for other things. A photo? You mean photo? Like you know, like the subway steps. I just said the Dumbo, the window. Yeah. I mean, I love that. Because all, because all the photos and everything else are very tiny and intimate and complex. And that just opened the space in a whole different way. And I just yes. wondered if that might be something you'd investigate again. I am. I am investigating that very, very thoroughly now in another project that I'm, I'm thinking hmm. about. Yes. Interesting. I, I, love that. I love that idea of bringing the big photo inside the this, you know, this whole other... Yeah, it really did something very different with your work. It was exciting. Yeah. It was an amazing project for me. I really loved working on that one. Okay. Moving. Things seem to be moving around quickly, but if you, there's um if you'd like to raise raise your hand or you can feel free to kind of jump in if you have a question. Okay, there's no some I, some people don't have a name. Um, oh, I just sorry. wanted to say, Eddie, how much I appreciated your comment about scale and size and that um, actual dimensions don't necessarily define if a work is a large work 
or if it's a small work, that there can be a monumentality to the smallness of something, depending on how you enter into it and view it. But I think my question for you is, is you spend a lot of time looking at other people's art and being very generous in finding venues for other people to show their work. But when you are genuinely looking for your own inspiration, what do you look at? Uh, <laughs> maybe not the not, uh, immediate uh, association you would have. I love Northern Renaissance art. Uh, I love Bruegel. Uh, I, I love complex vistas of, of uh, landscape with people in it and narratives in it. And, and um, that, that's a period of time that I'm very drawn to. I also love the way that they uh, they worked with the perspective, the, pers the kind of between perspective and flatness. Um, the early, I'm talking about okay. the early. Um, and then I'm looking at I'm I'm looking at uh, Kentridge. I love Kentridge. I love his work. I like I, what I'm looking at with him is the scope of his thought process. I'm very inspired by, by the totality of, of his thought process and the rigorous uh, research that he's making into subjects that are very interesting to know that I'm comparing myself to Cambridge and <laughs> looking at Cambridge because he's, he's looking at music and, and, and literature and, and history and art all together and I'm, I'm very inspired by that. You see, also for me in your work is there's almost a performalist quality that really, for me makes me think very much of some of the artists in the 70s that uh, documented like a like Long and Hubler and all of these people who, and to me, you bring up very early Renaissance work makes perfect sense to me because I feel like um, although your work feels very contemporary, there's a sense of this uh, broadness of history. That's why I'm asking you, you know, what do you like to look at? Because I could definitely see some of the characteristics of very early, perhaps almost religious work and things that were made very much to sit in a very specific kind of architectural setting. But then it also moves into this experiential quality, this diaristic quality of uh, particularly that beautiful piece that um, was about the space between two places. Uh, the 15,000 and whatever feet, miles, <laughs> whatever, um, where you document the, you piece them together that way. And that has very much this, this performalist quality that, yes. that I find very interesting from the 70s. Though. It's a very, very good point. And I, what, the, the, the idea of documenting is very, yeah, it was very strong in the 70s. And I, I am inspired by that. Absolutely. It's really a piece to me looking at that. Mm. Also, if I'm looking at a literature, I'm looking a lot at literature too. Um, and um, I think literature is a very strong uh, source for me. Um, I like Siebold, for instance, you know, like uh, going into a place and, and kind of digging into the history and the psychology of, of the people and the, the space. And, and it, it's, it's, it's diaristic in a way, but you know, it's, it's also like a travel kind of thing, and, and, and so these, these things are very operatic and all those, I, I really like, I'm looking a lot at Calvino and Borges, and although I don't want to put a list of books, but I think literature is very strong. So in a way, when you talk about books and you talk about the documentary element of it, I think it all ties in together, for me, in my head at least. I know Barbara has something she wants to ask or comment. Unmute yourself first. Oh, um, I was just, I had no idea that you, you paint, you know, you made those small paintings and, and you were talking about, you know, being engaged in a different painting practice now. And I, I wondered if, you know, that was purely a result of, of, of being quarantined or, or, um, you know, I just basically what your relationship to painting has been because it's it's wonderful to look at those in terms of the installations. Um, you know, I I'm coming from painting. I'm coming from sense. painting and drawing. So I yeah. basically I started as a, a pretty narrative a 
draftswoman, <laughs> if you say it, <laughs> draftsman, draftswoman. I, I was drawing a lot. And um, the painting was also uh, not like, I would say between figurative and abstract, but, but more. So I, I'm, this, is, this is my language, uh, my basic language. And then I, I came out of, of that into the, the three dimensional. So painting for me is something that I actually love doing and I'm doing it. I'm doing it constantly, but I did more of it now because of the quarantine. So, you know, the scale and the intimacy of it and I, I just felt a need to really go rigorously into it back. Yeah. Great. I know uh, Mikhail had a question. Yeah, I, I was just uh, wondering about the connection between architecture and um, and your work because I see a lot of uh, very amorphous areas there, things that are going like landscapes, but on the other hand I see that you insert there this kind of like very structured um, architectures in the middle. Maybe you could talk about it a little bit. Sure. So um, I, I love transitions and transformations and uh, fluidity. So for me, the architecture comes out of, of the natural patterns and natural patterns come into the architecture. Uh, it's, it's, um, I love the way that they correspond to each other and how they create a universe of coexistence. I mean, this for me is our world actually. We have a world of architecture and natural patterns and how do they mix together and each of them stands for something else. So um, I, I do have a lot of, uh, if you look at the images, if you talk literally about images, there are a lot of urban scenes, kind of little vignettes of architecture inside and also uh, I have also a uh, architecture like in the window that I made is actually an architectural uh, structure uh, so and then you have this amorphous kind of uh, force of nature coming out of it so for me I think it's a way to kind of navigate between those two and to to make sense of, of the, the, the this coexistence does that answer your question yes thank you um, Sarah, and I see you have a question. Yeah, let me, sorry. Am I, am I unmuted? Yeah. Can you hear me? I yes. can hear. Okay. Um, Eddie, I am loving seeing you talk about your work. I loved hearing about all your historical references. Um, and I was going to ask you about figures because you were talking about you know, I feel like I'm looking at like a little Bosch painting sometimes and I, I feel like I see little figures emerging but yet they're so loose and ephemeral that they're there but they're not there and I'm wondering if that's just they just sort of emerge like if you're intentionally getting figurative elements in there or that's just sort of happening no they're intentional <laughs> okay no no they are intentional and i'm saying it as as you're not hallucinating it it is there and and i blur it because yeah. i want it to be part of the landscape but 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 you need to kind of double guess you know because yeah, absolutely so yeah it, it is intentional i do have figures and characters and a little a lot of narratives inside but it's it's abstracted so it becomes, you know, more open-ended and more suggestive, I think. Yeah. That's I, love, I love how you go between like these little compartmentalized little areas that have vignettes like you're talking about, but yet they all come together to sort of be like this big wave form. And then you also have these very just sort of strictly wave forms. And I just, I love seeing you go back and forth between those two things. Kind of stuck on some Saren. <laughs> I just tried to jump in and forgot I put myself on mute. Um, well, thank you so much, um, everybody, for joining us. Um, do you have anything you want to kind of use as a, a closing, um, a closing statement? Yeah, like a wrap up. 
just thanking everybody for being here in such a difficult times and, and spending so much time with me. Um, I really appreciate everybody's presence. Thank you. Yeah, it is really wonderful to see everybody. Thank you so much for joining us as we took this jump into virtual programming and virtual studio tours. We have a visit on Thursday with Paul Michael Graves and on Friday we're going to see Kate Favell um, and we're also going to be lining up three more for next week. We plan to do this throughout the month of May um, and very likely we'll continue in some capacity beyond. Um, so thank you so much. Can, can yes. I ask you something just for the people who are here, a lot of artists, I mean, uh, if somebody is interested to, to be part of this program, is there any way they can approach you or, or you, you have your own selection of, how does it work? I, I have a lot of ideas, but if there's someone that wants to do one, let's talk. Email okay. me. My email address <laughs> is charlotte at pelhamartcenter.org. Um, so I'd be more than happy to talk with anyone. I see. There's some very cool artists on this call. Um, some people I have their work in my house, which is cool too. Um, <laughs> so it's very neat for me. And I just, I just, I have to say from these programs, I've been learning so much and I view it as such an opportunity about learning about an artist's thought progression and where they come from and who they are. Um, I, it's a real honor to host them and I've been really appreciating it. Um, and getting to see so many familiar faces, it's, it's so beautiful and wonderful. Um, so thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye. Follow us on social media. <laughs> we'll be putting out new information at the end of the week. Um, and stay in touch. Create out there. Stay creative. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thanks. Sure. Thank you, Charlotte. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, Oh, hi, it's Carol Dime. I'll Is the recording, um, hi, available? I had to come in a little late. I wondered if I could catch the beginning through the recording. Do you have those up on the... Uh, we're, we're working on that. Um, and we'll, we'll, we haven't figured out like how we're getting them out there yet. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah uh, but once, once we have it, we'll, we'll make it public. Okay, awesome. Oh, I'm sorry I missed the beginning. Eddie looks looks fabulous. Look at all these faces here. Nice. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I'm gonna end for all. It's my least favorite part. I know. <laughs> Hanging up the worst on these. All right. <laughs>